Hi, everyone, and welcome back to the Hockey Journey Podcast, episode number 121, The Holistic Health Coach, Kayla olson Pitlick, presented to you by OnlineHockeyTraining.com. I'm your host, Coach Lance Pitlick. If you're new here, please make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on any future episodes. Before we dive into a little discussion about holistic health with my new daughter-in-law, Kayla Olson Pitlick, and begin this conversation. If you want to learn more about me, my hockey experiences, that I have the world's largest database of off ice stick handling, passing, and hockey shooting drills, what I know, and most importantly, how I've been helping hockey players get really good with a stick and puck, just head on over to OnlineHockeyTraining.com, that's OnlineHockeyTraining.com, and gain instant access to my 10-part video series where I'll show you everything. Consider it my gift to you. Lastly, if you live in Minnesota or are visiting the state of hockey sometime soon and want to schedule an in-person off-ice stick skills lesson, I'd love to have the opportunity to show you my little world. Go to sweethockeycoach.com, that's sweethockeycoach.com, and watch the video on the homepage for instructions. Thanks, and I look forward to working with you sometime soon. As I mentioned in the intro, I have a new daughter-in-law, and if you would have told me two, just over two years ago when I started the Hockey Journey podcast that one of my sons would be married and I'd be having his wife on the show, what? Mind-blowing. But here we are, and I couldn't be more excited. Why am I so excited, you ask? Great question, people, because I owe a ton of credit to my next guest for suggesting some pretty impactful ideas for Proving my overall health and happiness uh, the last two calendar years. What's cool is that everything she's learned, shared with me and other close family members, is now available to anyone interested in optimizing their life, as you'll learn more about in the coming conversational minutes. Uh, I've talked enough, so let's get this party started. Ladies and gentlemen, please help me in welcoming Kayla Olson Pitlick to the show. Kayla, Welcome to the Hockey Journey Podcast. Thanks for having me. It's not every day that you get to uh, record a podcast with your father-in-law, so I'm happy to be here. <laughs> no, uh, I, I'm just going to, real quick, I usually don't get into the nuts and bolts of a day, but man, um, and we can talk about this later, but it has just been cloudy here, it seems like, for weeks, and man, it's it's really affecting, you know, me, I even I, I got to go outside and just take a five minute walk just to you know get some fresh air. But that really has affected me. Um, has it been similar out there where you guys are in Pennsylvania? Yeah, it has surprisingly. Um, super cloudy, not as cold as as Minnesota. Um, but yeah, I mean seasonal depression they call it sad is is a real thing. And yeah, just that lack of sunlight and vitality. Um, we actually uh, invested in a vitamin D lamp. Um, for this winter because yeah, it's a, it's a real problem, um, in the, in the North that we all kind of deal with and everyone's a little bit like demented in the winter. So yeah, it's, it's been a real, a real thing that we all go through every okay. season. Okay, good. I'm glad I'm not the weird one. So, <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not. so uh, so you're getting, uh, into the holistic health coach game, um, have studied under Paul check, and have all of your certifications through the world-renowned Czech Institute. Uh, I want to hear everything about how you're helping people become better versions of themselves uh, each and every day, and we'll eventually get there. But first, if you don't mind, uh, before we get to what you're doing today, uh, what I like to do with all the guests I have on the show is to take a few minutes and rewind the tape. Uh, let's go back to the beginning. Where did you grow up? What was your childhood like? Your parents, other siblings, friends, early interests, etc. cetera. Uh, basically, give the listeners a glimpse at home, a tiny peek at what it was like growing up, Kayla Olson at the time. <laughs> yeah, so I grew up in Minnesota. And uh, whenever anyone asks me in Minnesota where I grew up, I have a hard time answering because we moved around so much. Um, 
I was born to a single mother, um, and I am a twin, so a single mother of twins. Um, and yeah. Hold on, let me, let me interrupt there. Is there what kind of twin? Because aren't there a couple <laughs> versions, fraternal and identical? and identical? Yes, there are a couple versions, um, and I'm an identical twin, which means we essentially are of the same DNA, the same egg that's split into two. Um, so that's really fun. Uh, that, is that a better? Is that a better version to be than fraternal? <laughs> I, I would say so because it's more fun because we look so similar that we um, mess with people quite a bit. <laughs> oh, you're one of those two. Okay. <laughs> Not on purpose, but it just kind of happens where someone might come up to me um, in school and be like, hey, Demi, and you just get to the point. That's my sister's name, Demi. And you get to the point where you just kind of go along with it, and it's, it's kind of fun. So that was Yeah, fun. well, I, I know it. when the first time I saw the two of you together, it I had to pause and, you know, think who was who because <laughs> it is <laughs> – it is close. So sorry for interrupting. No, my, uh, yeah, even my closest family members um, still have a hard time telling us apart. So yeah, that's always fun. Um, but yeah, so we grew up, it was just the three of us uh, in the beginning um, until we were about five. And then uh, my mom ended up marrying and we became very quickly a family of three into a family of six. Um, and like I said, we moved around a lot and that just was based on where my parents could find work and where, you know, they could afford to live and raise a family. Um, and so we, I was born kind of closer to the Twin Cities in your neck of the woods in the Plymouth, Wyzetta area. And then when we um, became a bigger family, we moved out about an hour west, um, just where it was a little bit more affordable for my parents to, you know, raise us and take care of us. Um, and we eventually, I want to say, I think it was my junior year in high school, we moved back to Wyzetta um, based on my, my stepdad's job. And that was quite a uh, culture shock for my sister and I um, because we were in a very you know, small school, small worlds um, where our class size was about 100. And then uh, Wyzetta is one of the, the biggest um, schools in Minnesota. And that went to, I think our class size was around 900. Um, and so, you know. That was quite the uh, the difference um, in size uh, and just, yeah, a lot of different things. And um, But yeah, I was really blessed. Uh, like I said, my, my mom had us. She was very young. She was a single parent, uh, but we spent a lot of time with our grandparents growing up. So my maternal grandparents, who we called Nana and Papa, they lived out in the middle of the woods. Um, and so we spent a lot of time outdoors. And then my paternal grandparents actually have a lake home uh, that was built by my great grandparents. And so a lot of time at the cabin, at the lake, in nature. And that really was growing up my, um, my way of stress relief, I guess. Uh, and I kind of grew up, obviously, before the big social media movement, uh, aging myself a bit. But I am going to be 30 this year. Um, so, yeah, I spent a lot of time growing up just outside and uh with my grandparents and you know moving around a lot but and then let I'll me start. ask yep. let me ask you this because you a couple things the the moving around bit you you said that a lot your mom after some time having you kids got married uh i i come uh from a divorced family so i know that when there's a disruption in the family uh or you know in the the, the dynamic it, it was challenging and I was, you were five, so um, that I, for me, it happened when I was going into fifth grade. But anyways, and then the other thing, you, you said that um, I caught when you were at your grandparents' house in the woods, that you said that the being out in nature was a stress relief. So are, I'm connecting the dots here. Was that tough for you, moving around and, you know, getting into another family that had other siblings when you went from three to six? Yeah, no, for sure. It was a big stressor, um, just a big change, you know, and especially as kids, we don't always cope with that the best. Um, and for us, uh, my uh, stepdad, he had a daughter that was the same age as me and my sister. And so three girls of the same age uh, was quite an interesting dynamic. There was sometimes, you know, some two Cat and fights. one. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that was hard. And then she didn't live with us full time. So um she, you know, kind of had her way of how she was raised. And my mom raised my sister and I very differently. And as a single parent, you know, 
what my mom said was, you know, the final <laughs> law and there was no like, let me go ask dad. And so definitely different like parenting styles, like when my brother was born and uh, my stepsister coming into the picture. So there was just a lot going on. And, and yes, yeah. um, time in nature as like my de-stressor, I feel like it kind of was like my little like fantasy land. Um, and, you know, at that point, obviously I didn't know like all of the actual like, you know, research that goes into like uh, how nature actually is like the greatest, you know, de-stressor and you kind of get into more of like a meditative state. Um, and obviously we talked about at the beginning, the vitamin D, the sunshine, like that's so important for our health and fresh air and all those things. So yeah, that really was where I kind of escaped from the stress at home and the stress at school because um, I was... I was always deemed as like a shy kid growing up, but really um, it was probably around that time when, you know, we grew our family and started moving around a lot that my social anxiety was just through the roof. Um, and so, yeah, that was, those were all things that I could escape from out in nature. So, so what, did, what, did, what would be an example of social anxiety? Just cause I train a lot of, um, I train way more girls than I do, boys now and um you know there there's a lot of a lot of stuff going on in the world that i mean how do you deal with it so what does that look like you know that you're you're just uh, that increased anxiety what what would a day have what would happen to you physically or emotionally yeah. i think for me how that showed up was um sort of like this feeling that I was would em embarrass myself by what I would say, what I would do. So I was very like closed off, quiet. Um, if anyone even like there was a time in my life where if someone would speak to me, like my face would get, you know, beat red, like just like the yeah, the simple thing of like being acknowledged by like another person. And yeah, wow. just like this anxiety of not knowing what to say or saying the wrong thing. And I was even thinking about like recording this podcast today, like um, that past version of me would have probably been up all night worrying that I could, you know, say the wrong thing or, you know, embarrass myself somehow or, you know, make you think of me differently. Like, who is this person that my, <laughs> my son is married? <laughs> like, um, so yeah, that took, and it was kind of funny because they always say like the, uh, the medicine is in, you know, the poison. And I think really how I overcame my social anxiety was by being social and I was forced to do that, um, when I was working in college um, in like re the restaurant business, so serving, bartending, all those kind of things where I was really forced to, you know, make small talk with people and just get more comfortable. Like, I really feel like that's how I overcame that. That's awesome. So you, you're progressing up. When did you uh, move to YZ? Was that during high school years or? Yep, that was right in the middle of our junior year. Um, so yeah, middle of the school year, like I said, big culture shock. Um, but my my mom uh, really, you know, she kind of saw what what was what was the future like for you know someone in a small town. And this is very like generalized, but you know, she always wanted for me and my sister a life better than what she had you know kind of gotten herself into. Um, and she just saw that there was way more opportunity, um, in a school district like Wayzata and for getting into college and all those things. So yes, it was, you know, for where they could find work, but also I know my mom just, you know, wanted those opportunities for my sister and I, and so that went into it as well. Okay. Were you, did you play sports? Did you and your sister play sports? Were you, did you have similar interests then? Like you did everything together? <laughs> We were attached at the hips and um, I, my sister and I, we both, of course, did uh, track and dance lines. So that's what we got into um, around, I think, middle school. And that was just based on, you know, my parents couldn't invest a lot of time and money into um, a sport, uh, but also just where we grew up, like uh, things like lacrosse, soccer, even like hockey. Um, I remember there was like three small towns you had to combine just to like make one hockey team um but yeah we did track and dance and that was just kind of something to i guess keep us busy move our bodies um i didn't love track i thought it was actually pretty boring um going to track meets and you know waiting around for your event and it's over in a matter of seconds um 
but dance was something that I definitely got into a lot more and loved. And um, I just loved like learning the routines, um, moving my body. Like my sister and I would spend hours just down in our basement, you know, getting that routine right. And uh, her and I are a both, uh, both a bit type A. I think I'm a little bit more a mix. Um, but yeah, get like learning that routine. Um, I think I can, you know, freestyle using dance as a metaphor a bit more. Um, but that was something that definitely fit with us. Uh, and uh, I eventually gave that up just because we, uh, my sister and I made the varsity team uh, for dance line our freshman year and none of our friends made the team and it just, it, it wasn't fun anymore. Um, and so, yeah, it just wasn't something that I had enjoyed as much. And so when we moved to YZ, we just kind of, you know, gave that up. And also because YZ school district is very competitive. And like I said, we were just doing it for fun as some, and something to do. So that's gotcha. kind of where that, where that died. Gotcha. So, uh, anyone in your fam, did your, did your mom go to college? I can't remember if I heard that or not. No, uh, my sister and I were uh, first generation college graduates. So that was a really big deal. Um, Cause yeah, my mom, she was 23 when she had us and she, she wasn't really on the greatest path. And so she always, you know, says that, you know, my sister and I were a big blessing in that way, even though there was obviously a lot of hardship uh, and raising twins on your own, but she wasn't on the best path. And so, yeah, my sister and I were first, the first to graduate from college. And um, I really have my mom to thank for that because um, what I perceived as a lot of tough love growing up was really just her wanting um, us to have like a world of opportunities. And that's really what my degree gave me. So one of the, the question that pops into my head is my family and my boys, uh, what we experienced, all of us went to the University of Minnesota and we, we got some type of financial assistance, a scholarship to go there. Um, did your mom help out paying for college or were, were you and your sister Demi, uh, you know, you're on the hook trying to figure it all out on your own? Yeah, I mean, my mom would have helped for sure if she could, but she wasn't in that position. And so um, there was a lot of financial aid uh, just because we, you know, were eligible for it. And then there were a lot of loans that um, we had to take out just to go. Uh, and at the time, you know, I'm an 18 year old girl. I don't really understand what that means as far as, you know, I'm going to be paying this back and then some, which is, you know, the interest on those loans. And yeah, I ended up graduating with, you know, six figures in, in debt because, you know, it took me five years to get where I wanted to be. And I actually went to an all girls um, private college. And so it was more expensive. Um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't trade that experience. Uh, my sister, uh, had her go at the U of M for a semester and it was just too big, too overwhelming. And I, um, I think I really like thrived in sort of the all girl, smaller environment, kind of like similar to how we grew up. Um, and it took a lot of the pressure, social pressure off for me. So, um, yeah, we ended up with a lot of debt and, you know, I had to enter the career force, although I had already been working since I was 15, um, to start, you know, paying that off and also, you know, building the life that I wanted to create for myself. It's, it's interesting because you were right at the, the kind of the, the, a fork in the road when, you know, if you, if, if the internet and the world was like today, would you go back to college and do a college, uh, you know, a hundred thousand in college, or would you invest a hundred thousand in creating an online business or something like that? I think about that a lot, actually. Um, and I feel like the only thing is like, I feel like my path was my path and that, um, that degree did open doors for me to have the experiences that really got me to where I am today. And, um, if I hadn't have found myself, you know, working um, at a company, we were doing microbiome sequencing. And that just like really opened a lot of doors for me as far as like my personal growth, um, building my career, and then just like really discovering a lot of things about myself through 
through the world of, you know, corporate and uh, just science, because that's something I'd always been passionate about and um, improving human health through science. Um, so, yeah, I, I do think about that. Like, was it a waste? But then I think, well, yeah, I, maybe I would have never gotten to this point and really discovered like my true passion and what I believe is like my true purpose. So what did you graduate with? Uh, my sister and I both graduated with degrees in biochemistry. Um, I actually ended up at that the school, St. Kate's in St. Paul, because it's a nursing school. And my mom thought I would make a great nurse. I was good at taking care of people. And um, I very quickly realized that that was not for me, at least that kind of setting in a hospital setting. And But I still was really interested in the um, science part and especially like the biology um, of the human body. And so, yeah, I ended up graduating with a degree in biochemistry, which you can do quite a lot with. Um, my sister actually went on to pursue her doctorate in um, pharmacy. So she's going to be graduating this year. And I, I just entered the workforce because I didn't know um, what I wanted to do exactly. Uh, so I wasn't going to invest even more money or time into, you know, a master's or anything like that. Um, but yeah. What, uh, how many jobs did you have before you, uh, you met Rem? <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I mean, I've lost count, but I, I did everything from corn to tasseling to nannying. I even worked at the IT help desk. Um, like I said, a lot of jobs in the restaurant business. Um, yeah, the, the list really goes on. Uh, probably somewhere in the ballpark of like 10 different jobs. Wow. And that's, and you've been working since how old? 15. Um, we were old enough to start corn to tasseling um, in the summers. So <laughs> <laughs> I, I picked radishes is what I did. <laughs> you know, when you could get that first job, funny. I always uh, love asking people what, what was their first job. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. So um, you're, you're doing your biochem, so you're smarty pants. Good for you. Here's my applause for you. <laughs> and that stuff never, math and sciences were very challenging for me. But anyways, we all are attracted to, uh, drawn to something. But um, you are working. You're dating Ram. We, we see you once in a while, getting to know you a little bit. And then all of a sudden... Um, he gets uh, moved to Montreal and you're going to do something different than you have, you know, you haven't done since you were 15 and that's not work because you're going to, before every other year, you guys would just, he'd go away for the season. You would just go visit him. You were always working, but uh, you had an opportunity where you could go up there and work remotely for a little bit and then you were done working. Um, how was that? Did that open your eyes a little bit? Was it tough to even can fathom that? And then when you were into it, what, how was the first few days? <laughs> yeah. Um, that was a big transition, um, in my life. Like you said, I had been working since I was 15. Um, definitely raised with my mom with this mentality of be independent, take care of yourself, never depend on anyone else, never quit your job before you have a job, all those things. And, um, I was doing the exact opposite of that at that time, just cause you know, I, I wanted to be with Rem. I knew that we had a future together. and um, But at the same time, I had built this career. I put so much time and energy into it. Um, and yeah, I was actually doing some life coaching at the time with Angie Check, who was Paul Check's wife. And she gave me really great advice. And it was something along the lines of, you know, envision yourself like going in there, and, you know, resigning from your job and moving to Montreal, you know, with with REM and how does that feel in your body and you know how does the opposite feel and I really like sat with that decision and it just felt like the right time and um, I ended up making the leap and yeah I was really lucky that my I had built up like enough of a repertoire at work where they um, let me transition where I could you know finish out the year remotely and so there was a little bit more of like you know like I said a transition rather than just like cut and dry like I'm done working but but yeah this year this past year 2023 was like you said the first year in you know 15 years that I hadn't had a job um and that that was pretty like mind-blowing like 
blew the top off of every way that like I kind of experienced my usual day. Um, and I had a lot of, you know, extra energy and like mental space to really like focus on like what I was passionate about and get really clear on what I wanted to do with my life. And I, I'm so thankful, um, to Rem for, you know, giving me that freedom. And he's always my biggest supporter. Um, and to you as well, like you, uh, were someone who said, you know, see what you, you know, see what comes out of that space where like, you don't have anything else going on with your day. And yeah, I feel like it really did, um, give me the, the time and space to get clear on what I wanted to do with the rest of my life and what I wanted to create and what Rem and I were working towards together. So it's been, it's been pretty, um, pretty great. That's awesome. Um, I, I, w I was just happy for you because, you know, it was, you had an opportunity where you could take a breath. It was like when Lisa, when I retired from, from plan, um, you know, it wasn't that we had to jump right into something. We had some time and you, you got to have some, you know, pretty candid conversations with yourself to see what's, what's next. What's the, what's the next plan? What's the next, uh, road we're going to get on, get in on. So you, you've always been kind of a, a nature hugger, not quite the tree hugger that Lisa is, <laughs> but, <laughs> but close. Um, you know, what, what, did you have any like health issues growing up that it, it kind of forced you to, to, to take notice and to see if there was something that maybe you were eating that was contributing to you know, something that you didn't want going on in your life. How did you get to the point where you were drawn to the Czech Institute uh, to get to put all that time in to, to get certif certified? Because, I mean, it's like going to college again. It's so much information. And to mm -hmm. uh, embark on this journey of uh, passing on what you've, you've learned to others so they don't have to, you know, maybe experience the, the, the tougher times as much or as long. Yeah, um, it's it's a really, I wouldn't say there was like an aha moment, but a, a lot of events that kind of led me there and my health was definitely one of them. And I had mentioned my, my social anxiety um, already and people sometimes, you know, I think there's more um, uh, acceptance nowadays that like mental health is a part of health. And that was a big piece for me. Um, but on top of that, um, my skin was, was a big one. I, I suffered with acne quite a bit. And I think where that stemmed from, um, initially was, um, I had a, a staph infection in, in middle school that I got in my foot. Uh, we're not exactly sure how, um, but I ended up being hospitalized cause it was like life threatening. Um, and I was on all these antibiotics. Um, you know, I, I kicked the infection and then just things with my skin started happening after that, um, that just like never, never ended. And it was always something different. It was never quite presenting in the same way. So I dealt with, you know, cystic acne, fungal acne, things that we thought were still just like staff manifesting, um, on my body. And that was, yeah, that was traumatizing because I already mentioned, you know, I'm socially anxious and as a teenage girl, it's like, I didn't want to go to school because my skin was bad. Um, and because I, you know, was so anxious and that just, you know, it was like this vicious circle that I was really caught in. Um, and on top of that, like, um, there's a lot of things that we're kind of told that are, you know, just hereditary. And I, I think the thing that we forget is that, um, not only do we, you know, pass down our genes to our children, but also, um, kind of like our lifestyle. And so I was really just like continuing on with the lifestyle that my parents had, which was all that I knew. And that was a lot of um, eating processed foods. Like, it's kind of, you know, funny to me now, but really, like, the three main food groups that I grew up on was, like, you know, gluten, dairy, and McDonald's. And that's, um, you know, what my <laughs> what my mom ate when she was pregnant with us. It's, you know, what we ate whenever we were, you know, on trips to, you know, be handed off to our grandparents for the weekend. You know, we always stop at McDonald's. And uh, my mom did the best that she could, and a lot of that was, you know, boxed you know, dinners and, um, <laughs> we kind of make fun of, you know, what she put together, but she really just did the best she could. And now I kind of try to make those same recipes, but try to like elevate them a bit. Like hamburger helper is one <laughs> that yeah. I've been making a lot. Um, 
but yeah, just like from that lifestyle in hindsight, I realized those things eventually caught up to me. And like I said, that presented as acne and um, my skin and then just a lot of mental brain fog and headaches. And then, um, you know, as soon as my, my period came around when I was that age, um, my periods were horrible and I had horrible symptoms, horrible back pain. And I was that person in middle school um, who would have such a heavy period that I would bleed out in my chair and have to wear my gym clothes for the rest of the day. And um, yeah, it was all just very, I didn't know any different um, until, you know, I, until really I met Rem and obviously he was taking his health seriously for a different reason because, you know, his, his body is his vessel um, for playing hockey and being the best player that he can be. And, um, and yeah, I, I really started to care about the environment. That was my thing. Um, I was super into sustainability and um, reducing plastics. And I, I was working in a lab, and so I was super hyper aware of all the single-use plastic. Um, and that was something I really was deeply passionate about. And Rem was like, why do you care about plastic? Like, you need to care about your health. And <laughs> we, we eventually realized that, you know, it's all connected. Like, the health of the planet and the health of our bodies, like, go hand in hand. And um, that is something that we eventually could really relate on, um, him and I, and something that is like the, I think greatest connector in our relationship is, is health. And, um, so yeah, long answer, but that's kind of how I got here. And, uh, I have been able to clear a lot of those symptoms. Like my skin is better than it's been. Um, I definitely do not experience the same level of anxiety and, yeah, it, it's hard to even like tap back into those those states and those feelings um, and those symptoms that I I dealt with for so long because um, yeah through the holistic living and Paul Chuck's work and just all of the information that Rem and I have taken in over the years to just you know try to to be the best versions of ourselves and um, live a healthier life for ourselves for our families for for the planet and. Um, yeah, it's been it's been a long road. So you're 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 helping people, obviously, and that's one of the greatest uh, accomplishments at all. That if you can find a way to have your work where you help people, that's awesome. Yeah. Um, so you got involved with uh, Paul Check. Tell everyone a little bit about uh, you know the, your certifications uh, through uh, the Czech Institute and you know, how, how this is going to apply to people that you work with. Yeah. Um, so I found Paul check through, through Rem, uh, Rem, uh, was a big kind of, the term is checky. He was a big checky before the rest of us. Um, and I, um, through Rem, I read Paul's book, how to eat, move and be healthy. Um, and I really resonated with that. And then he also has a, a podcast living for you. And then like, just the wealth of knowledge and like YouTube videos and things online. And, um, Paul check has been, you know, practicing holistic health for longer than I've been on this planet. And, um, I think sometimes people might look at his, you know, book or his website and think that it might look outdated because he's been at it so long, but really the information is just like timeless. Um, and he really has a way of simplifying um, health, I think, and just getting it back to the the basics, back to the foundations. Um, and so he has this sort of four doctor approach, um, which is the four doctors are Dr. Diet, Dr. Quiet, Dr. Happy and Dr. Movement. And if you can master those four doctors, like you, you really can achieve, you know, better health for whatever you're trying to overcome. There's always going to be nuances, but like those really are like the foundations and you know, if you don't have those foundations and like, okay, you can sit in front of my vitamin D lamp, but you're still probably not going to look or feel the way that you want to um, until you really master the basics. Um, really, like the most foundational basic things. Um, and a lot of his, uh, his work is based off of um, how our ancestors lived. So, you know, what, how did they eat? You know, how did they sleep? Like they were really in tune yeah. with the rhythm of, of nature's, their circadian rhythms, you know, for us women, like our, our menstrual cycles, like it's all just like a cyclical 
a cyclical thing and we're just cyclical beings and we're so out of tune with that that I think that's where like you know issues really manifest and and we forget you know where where our food comes from and you know where ultimately like we came from as a species like even though you know we're living in this digital era um and you know things have progressed like we're still the same biology as you know the cavemen who were you know just cooking their food over the fire and now you know we have all these advances where we have you know a stove where we can cook our food and we have hvac to you know keep us warm but we kind of create all this other like busyness and make health really complicated but really um it's just going back to the basics and simplifying it. Um, I think to a lot of people get overwhelmed because there's so much information now, like you said, with the internet, like you can find all the information and there's a lot of, you know, conflicting information on health. And, um, that's where I think Paul really is a genius where he just simplifies it. And he says, you know, I want to, in all of his courses and his certifications that, um, I've taken and Rem has as well. Um, he says, you know, I want to teach you how to think, not what to think. Um, and so, so yeah, the, the certifications, um, for holistic health coaching, um, I think as a coach and you can probably relate to this, like number one, like you have to be practicing what you're preaching before you can really teach it to someone else. And so, um, I took, you know, the past couple of years, especially, you know, when I was done working to really apply these principles myself so that I just, you know, live and breathe them every day and just know them like the back of my hand. And now, um, you know, to teach onto others. And uh, I really started with, you know, our families um, and getting them more on board. Um, and now I, I just, I know that I, I can help others, um, other people, other women who were at where I was at and experiencing the things that I was experiencing. Um, and yeah, I just, I want to help people kind of get through all the noise and cut through all the sort of like bullshit and all the, the biohacks and all those things and just remember the basics and those things will, will really get you, I think, where you want to be, whether it's, you know, to clear up your brain fog, clear up your acne, to be the best athlete you can be, like Rem's, you know, a living example of that. Um, so, Yeah. Well, I think it's I think it's um, a good point or a good time just to remind people out there. I mean, this is a hockey podcast, so we, we should have hockey players listening. But there is this. I, I think when you think of hockey improvement or any sport improvement, you think of the the physical training. You know, getting better, skating, stick handling, stuff like that. But that's only a small percentage of the day, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. you, you got to operate and do all kinds of, you know, make all kinds of choices and decisions, hopefully the right ones all day. And then you hit the reset button and then the next day you got to do it again. Um, I think that one of the, the qualities that maybe drew you and Rem together were that you know, you, you both are just workhorses and you, you just, you define what the heck you want. And then you, you get the sledgehammer to it, put it into easily manageable bite-sized chunks and you just start grinding out day after day. Um, it's, so I just, I, I wanted just to segue into the hockey part of it, but you know, how has that changed since you got to really see Rem or, you know, an athlete, a high, high end athlete that, you know, is, is doing so much to, to be the best that they can be, give them ch themselves a chance to be the best they can be. Because I'll tell you this, when I played Kayla, I didn't act like that. You know, <laughs> I was a couple beers after most games and, you know, it was, you know, not chicken wings, but I mean, I ate healthy and stuff, but I didn't go the extra mile to see if I could take it to another level. So um, is, I'm sure that that gives you an insight that, you know, if, if a few people that I work with, you know, want to, you know, get to know what you got going on, that you can really relate to the, to the hockey side of it too. Yeah, for sure. It, it's been very eye opening because I think, um, 
we, I think we put athletes on a pedestal and we think that um, it comes easy and that people are kind of like naturally, you know, just gifted and that's just, you know, it's in their genes. It's, you know, and yeah, I guess when I got together with Rem and, you know, through his professional hockey journey, especially, I realized how much goes into it and like how much of his life revolves around hockey and it isn't just, um, you know, is he gifted and is he working on his skills, but it's, you know, is he managing his energy and is he, you know, eating correctly? And also, um, Paul Cech has this totem pole um, that he uses for like a health assessment. At the very top, it's, it's your psyche, it's your mindset. And then the next is, you know, your breath. But like, once again, at the very top, it, it's your mindset and how... How do you, you know, get through those those times where, you know, it's a very high stress career um, or just athletes in general. It's very high stress because, you know, you're using your body, you're using your mind, you're being judged on your performance. Um, it's a lot of travel. It's a lot of things that I don't think um, that people realize. And uh, it's just so much more than just being, you know, gifted and uh, putting in a lot of hours, you know in the gym or whatever, whatever it is. Um, it's, it's a lot of mindset. It's a lot of balancing. Like I've talked about those, those four doctors, those six foundation principles and just managing your energy. And that's something, um, you know, when Ram and I, when I decided I was going to leave my job and, um, you know, join Rem and just be a support for him while I was kind of figuring out exactly what I wanted to do. Um, just helping him manage his energy through, I would do all the grocery shopping, all the cooking, all the cleaning, and just making sure that he had an environment at home and an environment that I was helping him cultivate in his body through, you know, his nutrition and his hydration where he could maximize his energy and, you know, continue to um, show up at the rink and, of course, build on his skills and all those things. But, you know, we've done so many things from optimizing uh, his, his travel and, you know, what, what he's eating on the road. And, um, you know, we, we've had to move around quite a bit. Like we, you know, we moved in, we moved to Canada, which was, um, quite the, like the culture shock. And, uh, it was, yeah, we had to make a lot of adjustments from, you know, where we were getting our food. Everything was in French on the labels in Montreal. And yeah, yeah, you just kind of have to navigate through those and, um, just be resilient and, always remember the basics which is what rem and i um live every single day and it's it's a lot in like the mundane um it's less about you know having that one cold plunge and sauna session and more about you know how how did you sleep did you eat your three meals did you you know drink half your body weight in ounces of water that day like um did you you know take time for yourself uh you know, did you meditate? Did you do something that you loved? It's, it's all, it's all those things, balancing that. Yeah, absolutely. And it's, it is a balance. Um, but it's, it's that persistence. Um, and you know, for me, what, what was really eye opening for me is when, and you, you got to reflect and you gotta, you gotta assess, right? Like you said, otherwise you, you're not, you're not keeping score. You're not seeing what's going on. But I, I was, my, my body for the longest time was in, I was just flare ups and I would have different parts of my uh, body, my knees, my groins, my hips, my shoulders, my back, and never really thought that, you know, is it, is there stuff that I'm eating that may be causing this? So I started tracking everything that I ate and I found that if I cut out these highly processed foods, I mean, I was eating, I loved uh, chocolate life cereal. And so instead of popcorn, <laughs> I'm chowing this. And then, you know, the videos are coming out that this is the, the, it's one of the worst things that you can be putting into your body, this highly <laughs> processed cereal. Yeah. So I made that shift. And all of a sudden, it's like, you know, I'm, I'm going five days out of seven. I'm in pain. Now I'm down to four. I feel pretty good. And now, you know, I, I'm barely flaring up uh, once a month to where it's debilitating and I'd have to cancel lessons. So um, I, I think that, you know, years ago when organic food, let's just talk like that from that perspective, you know, for the longest time, that's like hippie stuff, 
you know, you're the, you're, you're buying organic. Wow. You're weird. But now, I mean, everyone's doing organic because everyone's more educated now and we're not, we're not, uh, at getting the stranglehold by, you know, big business and the, and the advertising, uh, cause there, but now there's just so much out there that you just, you don't know what's true or what's false. Right. Right. So okay. go ahead. I was sorry to interrupt. Oh no, I was just going to say, um, yeah, there's so many different like diets that people subscribe to. And I think the two, the big ones, there's like the carnivore diet, which is like all meat and the, the vegan diet, which is, you know, all veggies and, you know, people do that and they feel so great. And it's like, okay, well, what do they have in common? And it's the fact that, yeah, they cut out those processed foods. Um, and yeah, that inflammation, those flare ups that you're, that you're talking about in your body, like, of course, that's going to, yeah, that's going to be caused by what you're putting in your body. It's going to be caused by, by stress because, you know, like I said, our biology hasn't evolved, you know, past the caveman area where if you are experiencing stress in any way, shape or form, like your body still perceives that as like you're running from a lion. And so if you're, you know, s stressed about um, whatever it is, your your relationship or, you know, your performance that night um, in your game wasn't, you know, what you wanted it to be like, yeah, all those things um, can lead to that inflammation. But yeah, the really the key factor is what we are putting on our body and or in our body and on our body because um especially as it relates to the skin i've i've learned is that you know we we absorb things through our skin just as you know we absorb them through you know our gi tract whatever whatever we eat um and so the products that we have in our environments um matter even just as much as what you're what you're putting in your body but ultimately like we are what we eat i know everyone has heard that before but it's true like our body takes whatever we, you know, we give it and it tries to create energy and create, you know, more muscle to, you know, either sustain muscle or if you're trying to build muscle, if you're an athlete, like that all comes from your food. It doesn't, you know, come from anything else. And so I think, um, yeah, people will definitely notice a difference right away when you cut out those heavily processed things. And um, I always like the quote, something of, if you don't recognize something on an ingredient label, your bob your body probably won't either. Um, oh. I think that kind of a state that we've all, we've all experienced. Um, and you don't really know. It's kind of like the new normal, um, which is unfortunate, but just because it's normal doesn't mean it's, it's right. And when you cut those things off, I think you notice a difference right away. Like you're yeah. describing. Awesome. So, um, I want to get to now what what you have going on uh your your health coaching you know we we've you shared with us i mean you had a, a challenging childhood you know probably a little more challenging than most but uh your first generation you know it did affect you you still you know got that work ethic you and demi just kind of stuck together and grinded out mm -hmm. um you're a first generation college grad you had some body insecurities you you have some credit cards that were maxed out <laughs> <laughs> but along the way you know you, you established a work ethic and you're organized you care about the planet uh you invested in yourself and you got uh educated through the czech institute um how how can people you know what what happens when someone wants to work with you what's the process tell me a little bit about that so they can understand it yeah, absolutely. Um, right now, I, I'm on Instagram. So my um, handle on there is holistic homebody. Um, and we'll, we can link that so people can find me. Um, and that really was born from, I guess, my, my mission as a holistic health coach and sort of that persona that um, I, I'm keeping online is that um, I'm really, as a coach, on a mission to help others create a healthier environment in their home and their body that's going to give them the energy to confidently go after their dreams, you know, whatever those might be. And um, so you can find me on Instagram and you can book there. Um, otherwise, you can email me um, if you want to get in touch. And my email is Kayla at alchemycircle.com, uh, which is a little bit of a foreshadow uh, into what I have going on behind the scenes um, with a health focused business that Rem and I um, hope to launch and that is really going to be focused around coaching courses and community 
Um, and so that is something that we'll be launching this year. So people can look forward to that. Um, but I really didn't want to wait until the perfect time um, or that launch to to start coaching. And so um, I am taking on clients right now um, as I'm working on all those things behind the scenes. And yeah, I have a, a lot to look forward to this year. Um, and yeah, that's where that's where you can find me. And if you want to work with me or follow along and just get some, you know, some free tips um, on my Instagram, I really want to provide some value on there. If, you know, working with a health coach isn't, you know, in your wheelhouse right now, at least um, you can keep me in the mind for the future and at least take in some of the information right now. Perfect. I'll uh, connect with you uh, after the recording, but uh, to get all that information and I'll, I'll put it in the, the description so people can easily uh, click over to wherever you're directing them and they can learn some more about what you are doing, helping people. Um, anything else we got to cover, young lady? I think the only thing is I, I have a question for you. Okay. And that is um, from one coach to another, what, what's, what's your advice? What's your one piece of advice? Oh, getting into coaching, um, you know, and it's something that you absolutely don't have to worry about. And I think that you shared that as, you know, you, you, you have to have a knowledge that other people don't have and a knowledge that that knowledge can help and you're going to share it with them. But uh, the only way that really becomes sticky is if you're living those truths. And yeah. I think that this this episode was that. You're, you're just sharing everything that, uh, you know, you've investigated. And that's what I, I love about it is because you've done all the heavy lifting. You're doing all the certifications <laughs> and you're just giving me the, the you know, the easy stuff. Just do this. It you know it takes about two minutes every day. Just do that. You know, uh, so you you do all the heavy lifting, and you know, um, I don't want to spend time researching that stuff because my focus is on something else. So that's mm -hmm. why we pay coaches, so you know we can do get on the fast track uh, of absorbing. It's not like the Matrix where they can download the program into us, but. You know, it's pretty duck on close. So, um, so thank you for uh, everything that you've done there. Um, I, I, I would just say, yeah, just uh, be authentic. And when you don't have to fake it, um, it, it's pretty easy. And that first client, which you already have, you know, that's the hardest one to get. And you'll know very quickly if you're doing it, doing things correctly by, uh, you know, people keep signing up and wanting to, to get more of your time. Um, yeah. uh, I was told by a guy named Scott Bukestad. He's a, a shooting instructor here. I know you've heard of the name, but uh, yeah. I asked him kind of that same thing. What can I expect? He just says, you know, if if you're good, you won't have to advertise after a few years because it'll just be word of mouth. And that's uh, that's kind of how it's happened. So. Um, I would say you're doing a great job, young lady. Just uh, keep being you and practicing what you preach and uh, keep learning. And uh, I think you're going to be a, an awesome asset for, for anyone who would uh, like to get working with you. Thanks, Coach Lance. That, that really means a lot coming from you. So thank you're, you for that. You, yeah, you're very welcome. <laughs> okay, well, we've come to the end of this episode. I want to thank you, Kayla, for sharing your journey. Uh, my wife, Lisa, who you obviously know, <laughs> shared a quote with me uh, this week from some show that she's watching on Netflix. Uh, and it fits perfectly into anyone's uh, life journey. And it goes something like this. Uh, it's our scars that define what and who we are. Uh, reminders of what we survived. Uh, Pretty hard not to relate to that, wouldn't you say? <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, they're visible scars sometimes, and others, they're, they're internal that no one sees, but uh, we all have them. Um, so thank you for just sharing your story. Um, 
behind all the lows, the highs, uh, the education, the certifications, the debt, the relationships, experiences, all that stuff. What's emerged listening to you here today is an authentic, uh, thoughtful, and courageous healer uh, with a mind focused on sharing just truth and helping others. So thank you for being you, Kayla, uh, for always helping others and making this place we live a little better each day. I appreciate you being here. And you know that any if I can help you in any way, young lady, uh, just give me a holler. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for sharing your platform with me. I think it's, it's really amazing what you've created here and a place where people can share their journeys. So thank you. You're very welcome. We will uh, have you on again when you guys are going to be launching your website. Sound good? Yes. Stay tuned. Well, that concludes another episode of the Hockey Journey Podcast. I can't thank you enough for stopping by and listening. I hope you enjoyed the show and learning more about holistic health coach Kayla Olson Pitlick. If you'd like to learn more about how she's helping clients reach higher levels of personal happiness, I'll put all her information in the description. Lastly, if you think there's someone in your circle of family and friends that might like this episode as well, please share it with just one person. It will really help me in growing this hockey community. Again, I appreciate you being here. Don't forget to subscribe, rate, or submit a review. I hope to see you back here soon and do me a favor, make someone close to you smile today. All the best, my friends.